Hello, my name is Keith Hill and I'm with Omron Automation. Today's video will demonstrate how to set up our E5C series controller and PID control for a heating application. You'll notice on the front of the unit that we have five keys. The one to our very left most side is a circle key, that is our level key. Depending on how long you hold that key in, we'll get you through various different levels of programming within the unit. The next key to the right is a circle with an arrow on it. That is our mode key. Once you're in a particular level, tapping on the mode key will allow you to get to various different parameters within that level. The next key to the right is our PF key which is our programmable function key which allows you to you can program it for various different uh, operations but by default it is set up as a shift key and will allow you to shift through each digit the zero hundreds tens and thousands digit to speed up your your programming or incrementing of the values on the unit the next key to the right is our down arrow that will decrement the value when changing it. The next key to the right is our increment which will increment the value as you're changing it. Okay, now to get into the actual programming of the unit, we do need to get into the initial setting level. To get into the initial setting level, we're going to go and hold the level key for three seconds. To get into the adjustment level, all you have to do is tap on the key to get you into the adjustment level. So just tapping on it gets us into the adjustment level. Tapping it again gets us back to our operation level. To get into the initial setting level, we do need to hold this key for three seconds. But you'll notice that right now, when I'm in the operation level, my outputs are active. When I go and I hold the level key for three seconds, my outputs will turn off. So we do need to be careful moving into the uh, initial setting level to make sure it's safe for the machine. So to get in there, I'm going to go and hold my level key for three seconds. The display will start to flash and it'll get me into the very first parameter in the adjustment, uh, in the initial setting level. And you'll notice that my outputs did turn off in that case. Our very first parameter in the initial setting level is our INIT parameter, which is our input type. Now, for all the various different inputs that we can use for this unit, there's a number assigned to it. In the instruction sheet that is provided with the unit, or the data sheet and the user manual that you can find on our website, there is going to be a chart showing the various different numbers that you can assign to various different inputs. Now with the thermocouples and the RTD style you'll have several different numbers for each type. So for like a K type thermocouple I can either use a value of 5 or a value of 6. If I use a value of 6 I'll get one decimal place for my uh, process value and set point a value of 5 will be all in whole numbers. So that's just the two differences and you'll also get a finer resolution uh, or a, a lesser of a range of operation when you use a decimal place. So in this case I am using a K-style thermocouple. Using my chart, a K-style thermocouple I could set as a, a value of 5 or a value of 6. So in this case, I'll keep it in whole numbers and I'll leave it at a value of 5. To get to my next parameter, I'm going to tap on my mode key once. And that's going to get me to my D-U parameter, which is uh, degrees unit. Now in this case, as a default, it is set up for degrees Celsius. If I want to set it up for degrees Fahrenheit, I increment it to F as in Frank. Now you'll notice that as I change that, it, the display flashes. That's indicating that it's storing that value, so you don't need to hit an enter key or anything like that. 
Once you change it, it'll automatically store it. If I choose, I can go back, change it to a value of C. As simple as that. So I'm just going to change, keep this as a degrees F. To get to my next parameter, I'm going to go and I'm going to tap on my mode key, which will get me to my SL-H parameter, which is my set point limit high parameter. Whatever I program in this parameter, when I'm incrementing my set point in the operation level, Whatever I have set for this value, I will not be able to increment past that value when I'm in the operation level. So for this application, I'm going to set this up for 175. So I'm going to, I can either use my PF key, and I can increment this up. I'm going to use this to decrement down my that hundreds or thousands value. I'm going to then come over and increment this to a 5, a 7, and then decrement it down to 175. So that's kind of a way you can use the PF key if you'd like to shift through your, uh, your settings. <clears throat> to get to my next parameter, I'm going to tap on my mode key once. My next parameter is SL-L. This is my set point limit low value. So in this case, I'm heating. I don't have a chiller. So I'm just going to set my, uh, set, uh, my set point low value to zero. So in this case, I can just use the increment key and set this to a value of zero and allow that to save. So now my set point range is from 0 to 175 degrees. I'm going to tap on the mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is CNTL, which means control. Now in this case, if I want to use on-off control, I would leave this as default. But if I want to use PID control, I do need to increment this value to PID. So I'll allow that to save and I'll increment to my next parameter using my mode key. My next parameter is uh, S-HC which is standard or heating and cooling. Now in this application I am only using a heater so I will keep this in standard operation. If I had a, a heater and a chiller I would then set this to H-C for heating and cooling control. But in this case, I'm only using a heater, so I'll just keep this in standard control. I'm going to go and tap on the mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is self-tune. Now, we have a couple different ways that you can go in and tune the unit. Self-tune constantly sits there and monitors the application. And if uh, the uh, the actual process value falls out of a certain amount of degrees out of tolerance, the unit will see that and do an automatic or a self-tuning. This is a, it's a nice little way of tuning. You do need to make sure that if you do use self-tune that you do not turn the power off to the heater while the unit is turned on. If you do that, the unit doesn't realize you turned the power off to the heater, it sees it falling out of tolerance and it'll retune itself and it could possibly tune itself way out and it might take a while for it to tune itself back in. So in this case, I'm going to go and show you how auto-tuning works. So I'm going to turn the self-tuning parameter off because I don't want to have to worry about that. So I'm going to turn this off. Now with auto-tuning, Auto-tuning is a force tuning, so when I do the auto-tuning, it will only tune at that time. It won't retune itself until I tell it to tune again. So that's kind of the two differences. So I'm going to keep the self-tune off in this case. I'm going to tap on the mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is PTRN, which stands for pattern. With this controller, I do have the ability to program one ramp and one soak. 
So what that means is, is let's say I want to use this as a uh, to bake bread or something. And I have a, a specific amount of time I want to keep my output turned on for. If I set it to something other than off, I will go in and I will bring the temperature up to a certain set point and I'll maintain it for X amount of time and I'll shut my output off. In this case, I want to keep the output working all the time, so I'm just going to leave it pattern off. So I'm going to go and tap on my mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is my CP or control period. The control period is the amount of time that we're using, the time base that we're using to turn the output on and off based on the amount of power that I have. With this particular unit I have a relay output. So I don't want to adjust the control period down too much lower than 20, degree, uh, 20 seconds. But what happens here is if I have a transistor type or a Q-type output, I can lower this down quite a bit because that's a transistor output and I don't have to worry about turning the output on very quickly. But with a relay output, I want to keep it at 20 so that I don't really start breaking down my relay quicker than I want to. With a control period of 20 seconds, if, I have, if the unit while you're in PID control is calling for 50% power, I will keep my output on for 10 seconds, off for 10 seconds. On for 10, off for 10. If, I, if my power in demand increases to 75%, then my output would be on for 15 seconds and then off for 5. So it's just a time base of what you're slicing your power out for a pulsed output. So in this case, I do have a relay output. I'm going to keep it at about 20 for now, and then you can go back and adjust it if you need to. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to tap on my mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is OREV. This is for reverse or direct operation. Now since I'm using a heater, I do want to keep this in OR-R. If I'm using it for cooling only, I can change this to OR-D and then this is set up for a cooling application. But since I'm using it as a heating application, I'm just going to decrement this back down to OR-R. I'm going to tap on the mode key one more time to get to my next parameter, which is ALT1, which is my alarm 1 type. Now in this case, for this application, I'm not going to be using my alarms. There are various different alarms that you can assign each one of your alarm outputs to uh, if you choose, and there's a, there's a list in the user manual to explain the different types of alarm types. But in this case, since I'm not using my alarms, I don't want to have any other indications on the uh, display in my operation level, I'm just going to disable these. To disable them, you just use the down arrow and set that to a value of zero. I'm going to tap on the mode key one more time to get to my alarm type 2. I'll set that to a zero. And then I'll tap on the uh, mode key one more time and set my alarm type 3 to zero. So this unit has three different alarms I could, I could change. Depending on the style of unit that you have, you may have two, three, or four. So in this case, I only have three, so I'm going to turn all three off. So I'm going to go and tap on the level key one more time. You'll notice I'm back at the very first parameter in the initial setting level. So while I'm in each level, it's a circular type of programming. Every time I hit the level key or the mode key, it just keeps on going through all the parameters and then it'll get me back up to the top. There it was. And there it is again. So I'm kind of stuck in the initial setting level until I use my level key to get back out. To use my level key to get into the initial setting level, it took, I had to hold it for three seconds. It's the same to get back out. I'm going to hold the level key for three seconds. The whole display lights up. 
and then it'll go back to my operation level. So everything's set up good. I do have degrees Fahrenheit. I cannot decrement past zero. I can't increment past 175 degrees. It stops right there. So I, I can see that my uh, upper and lower set point limits are set proper. So now I've got everything pretty much set up, so all I really need to do is tune the unit. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to go and increment our set point, say 100 degrees. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to set your set point that you're going to operate the unit at and tune it at that. If you have several different set points, you're going to want to go in and kind of uh, see what the average of those set points are and tune it at the average of those set points. It'll give you a little bit better control over that entire range of your set points. So in this case I'm going to set it up for 100 degrees and I do want to set the set point before I go into the tuning because once you go into the tuning it locks this out. You'll notice I do have uh, the unit is trying to uh, control right now it is turning the output on and off but it's not tuned proper. So to tune it, our auto-tune parameter is found in our adjustment level. To get to the adjustment level, I'm just going to go and tap on my level key once, and it will get me into my adjustment level. I will then go and tap on the mode key once to get to my AT parameter. Now you'll only see this AT parameter if you are in PID control. If you do not see the AT parameter, you do not have it set up for, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in PID control. If you don't see it, you're not set up for PID. So once you're in the auto-tune uh, parameter, I'm going to go and I'm going to increment this to AT-2. AT-2 is going to give you 100% power to get to the set point. I can also go to an AT-1 which uses 40% power to get to set point, which is a little less aggressive, but it takes longer to get to set point. But in this case, I'm just going to keep it to AT-1, use 100% power for tuning, You'll notice that when I do change it from off to AT1 or AT2, my tune indication will turn on and the unit will then start to tune itself. I do not need to stay in this mode while it's tuning. I can go and tap on the mode key to get back out to the operation level and watch the process tune. Now what the unit will do is typically it will need to bring the system up to your set point. It will allow it to cool down. It will bring it back up to set point, cool down, and then bring it back up to set point again. So this is, usually takes about three times in order to determine uh, your correct PID values. During this time, you don't want to open up any doors on the system or introduce any disturbances that are abnormal to the application. Just allow the unit to tune. And you'll notice here I have a very small little heater, so it didn't take too long to tune. Sometimes it may take hours to tune if you have a very large system. In this case, I just have a little uh, heater bar, so it didn't take too long to tune you'll see that it actually turns the output on and off brings me up to my set point of 100 and I'll control pretty nicely. So that ends the uh, setup for the E5C series in PID control in a heating application. Thank you very much for your time and have yourself a great day.